We have all woken up in the unfolding story that hit us last night about New Zealand. And we found out with terrible information, even on the internet, that a gunman entered into two masjids, 49 people were killed, 41 at Masjid al Noor, 7 at the Linwood Mosque, another died in the hospital. The killer, or who so far has been brought into court, was a right wing terrorist, white supremacy. Brenton Tarrant. There are two others who have also been arrested. He wrote on his weapon, Alexander Bissonnet. This is the killer in Quebec City. He carried out this action according to him by a group called the Reborn Knights of the Templar, a crusading name. And he wrote a manifesto. He called it the great replacement towards a new society. And the essence of this manifesto comes in three areas. In his manifesto, the essence of his reasoning was number one, and these are his words, to directly reduce immigration rates in European lands by intimidating and physically removing the invaders themselves. Intimidation, physical removal. Number two, to agitate the political enemies of my people into action. To cause them to overextend their hand and experience the eventual and inevitable backlash. So he wants Muslims to overreact, to make a backlash in these lands in order to carry out their plans. To incite violence, retaliation and further divide between the European people and the invaders who are currently occupying European soil. This is the delusion of an insane terrorist. But this is something which is not new to us. It is a manifestation of Islamophobia. Let this word be imprinted in your minds and the minds of our children. Let it be known in the society. Let us be vigilant never to let any situation with Muslims pass without mentioning Islamophobia, the illogical fear of Islam and Muslims. Because now it is showing its murderous hand. But we have to remember that there is a $2 million Islamophobia machine in America pumping out information in order to rile up small-minded people. We know it kills because we suffered the Quebec massacre. Two months ago in Edmonton, right-wing terrorists entered the masjid. But fortunately, they were escorted out. Muslims were ready for them. And they took them out. In India, there are daily beef lynchings. Lynchings of people who eat beef. The Oslo killer, Oslo Norway, Anders Brevik, he murdered 70 people and he wrote a manifesto similar to this one. Islamophobia has created the largest refugee camp in the world in Burma, in Maynama, of the Rohingya people. Islamophobia, this irrational fear in China, has created the largest concentration camp in the world. Three million Uyghur Muslims put into concentration camps. Indian Islamophobes stripped four million Muslims in India of citizenship. In the United Nations Genocide Watch, they're watching India now for a potential genocide. In the Central African Republic, something which does not make the news generally, every single masjid has been destroyed. 500 masjids 
have been destroyed in the Central African Republic. Masjid al-Aqsa right now, the third of our harams is under attack. In Bab al-Rahmah, a locking cage has been put there to lock out Muslims from coming in. Thousands of Muslims are praying there and demonstrating. And recently they were attacked inside the masjid. You don't see it in the news. They were attacked inside of the masjid. And so it continues. The reality of our situation continues. But we need to remember the example of Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and his companions, Hasbunallah wa Ni'm al Wakil. They took a stand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had what we call Husnadhan Billah. We have to have the best belief, our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know the future. And if we don't know the future, then we shouldn't be afraid of the future. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will happen in the future. And Husn al-Dan Billah will tell us we believe in Allah. We believe that Allah has the best for us. Some of us will live longer. Other of us will depart this earth, inshallah, in a state of Islam. We have to have this positive understanding of, a, of the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that is the test that this ummah is under right now. We are under a test. We are in a purge that Allah will cleanse us. Allah will decide who is real and who is unreal. But after this, what is going to happen in our society? What is going to happen around the world? The answer is not to abandon the masjid. One of the Imams in Christ Church in New Zealand, where the incident happened, and they said, lock the masjid. He said, we will never abandon the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they want us to leave, we will come in largest numbers. If they want us to leave Masjid al-Aqsa, if we get an opportunity, we will go to Masjid al-Aqsa. Never abandon the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pressurize our officials that there be an official ban on Islamophobia, officially in our society. This is a wake-up call not to be watered down, but focus on what is happening to us. Because by circling our wagons, by supporting one another, by setting up the institutions to defend our children, defend our society, then we are setting a strong direction for the future of Islam here, as in the rest of the world. This is a critical moment for our Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the last testament. He has put it in our hearts and in our minds. And do not think that we will not be tested. Do not think that fitna, that trial and tribulation will not come to us as it came to believers before us. But the believers took a stand. They had husnad dan billah. They believed that Allah would do the best for them in this life and in the hereafter. So let us dig down deep. If the fear is in our hearts, take it out. Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the future. And it is better for us to die, to leave this world as men and women of Islam, instead of turn our backs in fear. We believe that our brothers and sisters are making a transition into gender. That inshallah, they will be shaheed. And one of the things that the shaheed will say, as reported by the Prophet Sallallahu when they asked the shaheed, what would you want the most? And he would say, I want to return back to earth so I can die again for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From what I am seeing now, 
the grace that I am seeing now. And so let us remember our brothers and sisters constantly all around the world where this is happening. Let us remember not only with our dua, but with our assistance, with our intelligence, with our knowledge. This is the time to close ranks. And for believers, if we have patience, fortitude, then this can turn into a positive situation for us instead of being one to cause depression and anxiety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and the earth. When we say Allahu Akbar, we mean it. That Allah is greater than everything in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter our brothers into sisters into the highest part of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the children who died in Christ shall enter them into the highest part of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the shuhada all around the world, the Uyghur Muslims, Muslims in Al-Aqsa, in Central African Republic. May Allah make it easy for them, tighten their ranks. May Allah help believers throughout the world and raise up leadership in the Muslim world to take us from darkness into light. And may Allah help all of us that our last word would be kalima la ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah.